Okay, it looks like I might be live now. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Board Game Brunch, my monthly live Q&A, which is the last Sunday of every month. Um, today is February 23rd, which is the last Sunday of February this year. And uh, I am Crystal Pisano, and I'm happy to be here with you all today to answer your questions and hang out with you. Uh, if someone in the chat could let me know if the audio sounds reasonably good. Uh, that would be great. And also say hello to Mamie. Uh, I haven't had a doggo on the stream with me for a while, so Mamie decided she would come and say hi, which means I had to leave my office door open, so that could turn into a disaster later. <gasps> Mamie, are you saying hello to everybody? Are you saying hello? <laughs> she is uh, very fluffy right now. We let their fur grow out a little bit more during the winter time because it's cold, and so she's very fluffy and very confused. She doesn't know to look at the camera, obviously. Um, she's not quite a YouTube famous streamer yet. Hello, darling. Okay, here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You're okay. I know. I should have put some clothes on her. She likes wearing clothes and she would have been um, excited about that if I had done that. Hi, darling. Oh my goodness. I know, you just want to give me kisses. Can I turn so you can face everybody? <gasps> what? <laughs> she got me she got me um do you want to stay and hang out during the stream or do you want to leave you look like you want to leave and i don't want to make you unhappy okay here let's say goodbye to everybody say bye <laughs> i hope that the thumbnail for this video chooses a thumbnail with maybe in it because that would make me very happy oh my goodness okay 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 here we go here we go can you get out I know, my, my office is a mess. Here, go this way. Look, you got it? Come here. Sorry, guys. There she goes. Uh, I have these sheets up right now because I was doing some extra special recording this past weekend, and I wanted to make sure my soundproofing was a little better than usual. Well, for whatever reason, this room, my office, just bounces sound around like crazy. So I've been playing with a lot of different things. Um, but if you have any questions for me, whether those questions are about board games or Dice Tower West, which is this Wednesday, um, or anything, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, I didn't prep a lot of, I didn't really bring anything for show and tell today because I didn't really have anything to show and tell. Uh, also, I'm in the middle of culling my board game collection, so. Uh, which I started that process months ago, and I'm finally now getting around to it. Um, so that's been a thing. So if anybody wants to ask me questions about that, um, that would be perfect as well. Um, all right, let me see what is in the chat. Uh, Tom Ripley said, hello, how are you? I'm pretty good. I think the last couple Q&As I've done I have just happened to fall on days where I wasn't feeling well or I had a migraine. And it is really, really difficult to do a live stream with lights in my face uh, when I have a migraine. But today, I do not have a migraine. I did have one yesterday. And I was worried. I was like, please don't let me have a migraine again. But I feel wonderful this morning. So that is a plus. Um, Tom also asks, did you watch Star Trek Picard? I have watched Picard, all of the currently available episodes, um, which is five now, I believe. Um, uh, and I see that Halo in the bottom of the chat there is also dropping. How are you liking Picard up until now? I, this is a weird question for me to answer because Picard is very different than really like almost any other Star Trek series that has ever existed. And I don't want that to sound like I don't like it because that's not true. I do like it, but I think... Picard is not a series that can be, there's a bit of a hum in the background. Yeah, that's probably just my computer. So sorry about that. Uh, if it's super bad, really distracting, please let me know. Um, if the noise is like really problematic, what I can do, I can take one of my extra foam squares that I have and kind of prop it up over here. So let me see. Let me know if what I just did um, has made the hum a little bit less. Um, I know I won't see the chat for 30 seconds or so, so I'll probably start talking about something else, but um, 
I might have been able to mitigate it a tiny bit. Um, okay, so back to Picard. It is not like most TV shows in that you can just like watch a single episode and get it, I think. They are working off of a lot of history, um, an entire other TV show. And that's not to say that you have to have seen Star Trek The Next Generation to watch Picard, because that's not true. You don't. But having watched Next Generation and all of the movies, there's a lot of history there. And there are a lot of pieces of the story of Picard that are being doled out slowly. It is more cinematic than most TV shows. Like this, honestly, so far for me, season one kind of feels like it's going to be a like t nine hour movie. I know that sounds horrible in theory, but they're not jam packing every single episode with tons of pointless or side plot stories. They're telling a single story over a long period of time and they're drawing it out and it is slower paced. None of the things I'm saying are bad. I just want to clarify, but I don't have the same enthusiasm and excitement for Picard that I did for Discovery. And again, this is not a negative. I don't, I, I want to make it really clear, but I also don't want to come to you all and say that it's just, oh my gosh, I'm just as excited as I was when I watched Discovery, because that's not true. Discovery was exciting for me right from the get-go and every episode was jam-packed with lots of cool things. And I love it. And I don't not love, <laughs> that's a bad way of saying that, Picard, but it's different. And I kind of like that, but it's a slow burn. So I feel like, this is a show that viewers will appreciate in much different ways. And I think that I, as a Star Trek fan, won't be able to really form a complete opinion about it until I get to see the story that they want to tell. Because it is being drawn out over multiple episodes. A single episode isn't in a bubble. It's the exact opposite of what Next Generation was. Next Generation had to be episodic because the people who were making that show forced it to be. Um, there were very few long arcs in Next Generation. Like, obviously, characters developed relationships and all of that, but this show is the antithesis of what the storytelling was in Next Gen, and I, I like that. But, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to explain. I hope that you all understand what I'm saying. Um, I don't dislike it, but I, I'm just waiting, kind of. I, I like what they're doing with it, but I don't feel like I can form, a, like I can't tell anybody this is an amazing show or this is a bad show or this is an anything show at this point because they're telling a long, full story. And we've already been, they, they were uh, renewed for season of anything, but I won't say it just in case people don't like getting ideas in their heads about shows, even if it is conjecture. Um, I have an idea of where the story might be going, um, but I, I really don't know for sure. So that was a really long answer. Um, it means a lot to me. So um, I will jump back up to see uh, other questions that popped up, if there were any. But Nick Holcomb just said, is Picard also connected to the recent films? So there has been a lot of people who are confused about this online, and I will explain it to the best of my ability. Um, the... Re the So the Kelvin timeline movies, which were what started in 2009 um, with Star Trek, that was just the singular title of the movie, and then um, the two that followed, Into Darkness and Beyond, those are in the Kelvin timeline. The event that began those that series of stories, the event that is what kind of kicked off the Kelvin timeline, was a sun going supernova near the planet Romulus. That happened in the prime timeline. Romulus was destroyed in the main timeline of Star Trek. Then in those movies, that's where Spock goes back in time and he goes into the Kelvin timeline and all of those movies then happen from that point on in a different timeline than the regular Star Trek stuff. But Romulus exploding, or the exploding, the planet didn't explode. You get what I mean. That happened in the prime timeline. And that event 
and things surrounding it do factor into Picard. So Picard is not tied into those movies in any real tangible story way other than the events that set off the Kelvin timeline also set off the timeline of where we are at in Picard in the prime timeline. So we're getting to see two four, two times of a singular fork. And if the base of that fork was that sun going supernova. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm explaining that well or not. Um, but nothing, everything that has been seen on screen, and that includes TV shows, movies, Kelvin timeline, all of that is canon and all of that is true and real in the world of Star Trek. Uh, written texts like books and comics and things like that aren't always canon, but can be. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I And I don't know everything about Star Trek as much as it might sound like that's not the case. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up. Um... Oh, a lot of people saying that maybe is cute. Yes, she's adorable and she knows it and she get a, gets away with practically murder because she's so cute. Um, I am, I do, she, yeah, she's not a well-behaved dog all the time, but she's very adorable. Uh, Nick Holcomb asks, what hot games are you looking forward to trying for the first time at Dice Tower West? That's actually a really good question. I, because I am part of the team that helps run Dice Tower West, and because I'm part of the Dice Tower, therefore I'm going to be participating in like the Dice Tower events at Dice Tower West as well. I tend to not give myself too many expectations as to what I'm going to play. Um, mostly because I would end up not playing any of it. Uh, but what I will do is I'll pull up the list that I made for the Dice Tower Cruise because there are some things on there that I really wanted to try and get played that I didn't get to. Um, so let's see here. Oh, the Isle of Cats. I keep hearing nothing but good things about. So that's kind of on my um, mind. I want to play Azul Summer Pavilion as well. I've only played the first two Azuls. I haven't played the third one. Uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom is really high on my list of games that I want to play soon. Um, Architects of the West Kingdom, it was amazing and one of my favorite worker placement games that I've ever played. And a lot of people like Paladins even more. And now they've come out, well, they haven't come out with, they've the news about the next game, the Viscounts, Vical, Vical? I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, I'm horrible. Vical of the West Kingdom. Um, I just saw that on Board Game Geek a few days ago. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, let's see. At some point, I do want to play Star Wars Outer Rim as well. But honestly, like there isn't a ton of stuff that I'm stressing about getting played at the convention. Um, a lot of my friends will be there, obviously, since this is my local convention as well. So people from my game group will be there. But um, it's tough for me to kind of split time between like fans of the Dice Tower and my friends and my Dice Tower friends and everything else. I always feel like I end up not getting to spend enough time with some of the people. Um, but luckily we have the play with the Dice Tower area where people can come and sit and play with specific uh, personalities from the Dice Tower at set times during the day. Um, and I definitely will be there at some points during each day, but I don't remember <laughs> when. It's all on my schedule. It's fine. So sorry that I didn't have any specific games. Well, I had a couple for you, I guess, but um, Games of Fire said, I'm culling my collection too. It is hard. Yeah, it is difficult for me. Not, it's, it's weird because I think the most difficult part of it for me is the logistics, like actually physically separating the games, getting them organized, going through everything to make sure all the pieces are there. I haven't done that yet and I'm really dreading it because I, it's, no, I don't, I don't enjoy that part of it. It's not fun. Um, but I am getting rid of a lot of games. I haven't made the list yet because I've just separated everything out. My friend Kathy came over to help me. Shout out to Kathy. She is the most wonderful friend in the world because she literally messaged me and she was like, you still have a giant pile of games sitting in your loft. Do you want me to come over and help you? <laughs> and I was like, yes, please. So she's wonderful. She literally just came over and she would hold up a game and we kind of didn't like, I mean, we didn't intentionally do it KonMari style, um, but it was, if 
If it gave me joy, I told her, yes, keep it. Or if I had a specific reason to keep it, then we kept it. Anything else, it went on the coal pile. And that included some really good games that I really like, but that I just don't think I need to own at this point. Um, but uh, here, I'll give you guys a little teaser um, in episode 99 of Board Game Blitz, which will come out this coming Thursday, we're going to be announcing a contest for our 100th episode, and we're going to be giving away some games as part of that contest, and some of those are games that I'm calling from my collection, and I will say, truly, they're not, like, complete crud. <laughs> like, there are some really good games in there that I'm giving away, and our uh, the podcast sponsor, Gray Fox Games, is giving us some cool prizes as well. So, look, you all have a teaser now that you know a contest is coming, so you better listen to the next couple episodes of Board Game Blitz, especially because our 100th episode I'm very excited about. We've already recorded it. It is so much fun. I cannot wait for you all to hear it. <laughs> it's just great. And I can't believe we're at 100 episodes. That literally makes my mind explode that we've done 100 episodes now. Um, and it's been almost four years. Yeah. So that's a little bit crazy. Um, let's see here. Uh, Halo earlier said, I love Picard. Um, and yeah, I don't not love it. I just, my feelings are in, are in progress. I'm moving toward a thing, I think a deep, deep love and appreciation for Picard. Um, and I just am not there yet. I'm trying to be thoughtful about it. I don't know why, but that's just the way I'm approaching it. Uh, Nick said, we are rewatching uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Currently, it is better in some ways than I remember and occasionally worse, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, it's interesting. The Next Generation definitely, especially season one is not good. It really isn't uh, in comparison to the later seasons. But there's some really, really neat stuff and some really deep topics that they touch on in that show. Um, it's... It's funny because Next Gen is the one I grew up with and was my favorite when I was a kid, but that's because I hadn't really watched as much of the other series. And now I would say Next Gen is probably my fourth favorite, um, but that's not including Picard in the list. I can't, Picard can't be put against the others yet in my mind. Um, right now my order would be DS9 first, then Discovery, although I think Discovery will surpass DS9 for me. And it almost already has. Um, then Voyager, then Next Gen. Um, and I don't even rank the original series or Enterprise. And I've never seen the animated series. Uh, I would like to watch the animated series at some point. Um, let's see here. Oh, Picard doing an over-the-top French accent is awesome. <laughs> that was definitely interesting in the episode where that happened. Um, Lots of back history and Easter eggs for long-term Trek fans. That's definitely true. Um, oh no, my chat just jumped all the way to the bottom. Hold on, scrolling back up. It's okay. I think you guys were just talking about a lot of um, Trek stuff. Ben Stone says, my brother is watching Enterprise for the first time. It's been a while since I watched it, but I remember not liking the timeline changes that happened. What were your thoughts on the timeline change? Uh, well, that's a good question, Ben. I don't know because I've only watched eight episodes of Enterprise. Um, until recently, I had only seen one episode of Enterprise. I watched the pilot and went, nope, and couldn't do it. Um, the pilot was really bad. And there were some, there were some specific reasons why. Um, but I'm actually helping out a friend who does Star Trek podcasting in the near future. And we're going to be talking about an episode of Enterprise. So I've started watching the first season to try and give it a chance. And I will admit it is not as bad as the first episode was. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll come to enjoy it at some point. It's not horrible. Well, there are parts of it that are horrible, but... <laughs> uh, James says, are there any games that you are finding hard to cull? Yeah, there were some when we were separating them out that I struggled with. Basically, if I couldn't come up with a compelling reason why I needed to keep a game, it went on the coal pile. Um, so there were some games that I don't think I'll play often that stayed. Um, especially there are some like games that are good for kids that I've picked up um, that I don't play very often. But I have a five-year-old nephew and I have an almost one-year-old nephew um, and obviously at some point I am hoping that you know when they get older they'll come and visit me and so I think having some kids games around wouldn't necessarily be uh, a bad thing 
I also kept some games that I was, wasn't sure about, but that came in really small boxes. Um, so even if I don't play them very often, it feels like they won't be taking up a lot of space. Um, so like, for instance, Hanabi, I used to play all the time and I really don't ever play anymore, but it's, the box is so small that I just, it doesn't feel bad to keep it around. Like at the very least, even if a, like somebody came over and they really loved that game, then I would have it. Um, but if it's in a big box, then I have to make a decision for good reason or not, because yeah. So I think the hardest games for me to call are the ones that have sentimental attachment, but also come in big boxes that I don't need to own anymore. <laughs> Um, and Sharkbait was kind of asking similar questions there. Were there, were there any games you decided to cull that you struggled with? And if so, what was the deciding factor for you to do so? Yeah, um, there were a few that I struggled with because I think there's something special about them, but I also am not going to play them anymore. A good example of this would actually be the Legendary Encounters Firefly game. So of the Legendary Encounters games, the Firefly one is one that most people don't talk about. It is amazing <laughs> in a lot of ways. It also has some very big flaws. The artwork is horrible. And I won't, I won't even try and excuse it. The artwork in the game is really, truly bad. I don't know what happened. But it's bad. But the thing is, if you're a fan of Fly Firefly, you know what the characters look like. You don't need to look at the artwork on the cards to know what those characters are, look like. So it shouldn't matter. Um, that game does something unique that I haven't, I personally haven't experienced in any other game. And that is it took a TV show and gave you a scenario for every single episode of the show. You get to play through every episode of Firefly in a board game and some of the mechanics that they came up with for some of the episodes like the one where you're kind of herding cattle for instance or you're being tortured um there are specific things in the game that are very clever and really really neat and i love playing through it we played through the whole thing every episode all of the setups um and i kind of want to play it more kind of but i don't think i'm going to so my friend so Kathy was like, yeah, then pass it on to somebody else. Let someone else enjoy it. And I was like, okay, that seems legitimate. Um, and I hate that the artwork made so many people shy away from that game. There are some rules inconsistencies and a little bit of un things that are unclear in the game. It's not perfect by any means mechanically, but it is just, if you're a fan of the Firefly TV show, I honestly think it's definitely worth checking out. So that's one that went on the coal pile, even though uh, I have a lot of love for it. So that's the kind of stuff that was hardest for me. Uh, Halo says, what is a game that is on your radar and you're dying to play but have not? I mean, Paladins of the West Kingdom kind of is that for me. Like everybody keeps talking about it and I really, really, really want to play it. So... Uh, before the cruise, it was the crew, but I got to play that on the cruise. Um, and I know we're going to have that in the library at Dice Tower West. We're going to have at least two copies of it in the library. Um, but I'm going to try not to monopolize it at all because I've already gotten to play it. And I know that it'll be nice for other people to get to try it. Although I do have it on pre-order already, a copy for myself, but I don't think it's coming till early March. Um, it's our, the English version has a released on uh, Amazon UK, but because of Brexit and other stuff, the shipping's really high. I don't know. That's what somebody told me. Let's see here. Terrier Halo asks, what is, what most recent release is a game that you have put on your really enjoy list? Um, that would definitely be Fantastic Factories. It, so it originally came out in... 2017, I want to say, either overseas or via Kickstarter or something else, but then it's just now getting published widely. Um, and I think it's just getting distribution here. Actually, this this month in February, I believe, is when it finally like hit everywhere here. Uh, I could be mistaken. I haven't followed up on that, but I believe like February 8th was the date um, for that one. And it is so fun uh, to hear me describe. I've, 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 when did I describe this? It was either in an episode of Dice Tower Tonight or on the podcast, Board Game Blitz. Um, and I don't remember. My brain tends to forget and mush things together. Um, but it is... Oh, it was on Board Game Blitz. It was like two episodes ago, maybe? Needless to say, Fantastic Factories is fantastic. 
and I would highly recommend it, especially if you like games where you get the feeling of, oh, I can do that, which will let me do this, which will let me do that, which will let me do this. So it's kind of engine building E, but not complex. Like I never felt like I didn't understand how the pieces of my engine worked together. And it was never an, oh no, I forgot to do this and this and this and this and whatever, which I sometimes happens to me in games like that. It was just all delightful. So I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. It gives me just a lot of good feelings. Um, I, yeah, it's great. Oh no, the chat jumped down again. I don't know why it does that. I'll be scrolling and it'll just like pop to the end for some reason. Uh, Sorrow Song says, I've played Isle of Cats and Paladins about three times each and they both have good staying power so far. Each game has them has had more strategy the more you play them and unlike others, I'm still excited to play. Oh, well, I, the unlike others makes me, gives me a little bit of pause, but I'm glad that you enjoyed both of them and now I'm even more excited to try them both. Um, let's see here. James says, cutting bad games is easy. With so many good games, it makes it a bit tougher. That is definitely true. Um, let's see. AJ says, Picard is awful. It's not Star Trek. And that is not true. <laughs> uh, the second statement, at least. You are obviously entitled to have your opinions about whether you like a show or not. But it is Star Trek. It's very much Star Trek. And I take issue with people who do not appreciate the fact that it is. It's Star Trek. Everything that has been created in the Star Trek universe is Star Trek. And just because you don't like a thing does not mean it's not. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Nick says, I just listened to episode 86 of the Dice Tower podcast. Eric gave his top 10 and Merchant of Venus was not included. His top 10 what? Well, I don't know what episode 86's topic was. Um... So you'll have to let me know. Sorry, I know that that was way long ago in the chat, possibly. Um, let's see here. More Star Trek stuff. A sorrow song said, upgrade Hanabi to the larger size one and then call it. <laughs> That's funny. I've actually in the past, like back when I used to play Hanabi a lot, I, ooh, sorry, I hit the mic. I apologize if that made a noise. Um, uh, yeah, I used to play Hanabi a lot more and I was going to get the deluxe version with the tiles because I think it's much easier to play with the tiles and with the cards, um, but I never ended up buying the deluxe version, so didn't have to worry about that. Let's see here. James said when he's calling his collection, for him one of the questions is, who will I play this game with? That's a really good point because sometimes games are great for you, but if you don't have a game group that will play them, then what's the point in keeping them? I guess in theory, finding a new game group or seeking out people who will play it with you. Um, and for me, there are some games like that. I don't get some of my favorite games played very often because they don't fit into my weekly game night very well, but I still keep them because I love them. Uh, but there are some others that I've gotten rid of for similar reasons. All right, let's see here. Oh, did it jump down again? Things look different. Oh, it's because I got to, to toward the end. Perfect. Okay, I'm getting caught up. That's good. Terrier Halo says, do you have a favorite two-player cafe game? A game you can play two players in a cafe or restaurant in about 30 minutes or less. Uh, yeah, actually, I have a few. Um, they're usually always in my quiver, which is my little case that I hold some board, small board games in. For me, for two players, less than 30 minutes, off the top of my head, the ones that I go to would be Hanami Koji, which is brilliant. Um, and so easy to teach, but has really interesting strategy in it. Um, Circle the Wagons, which is from Button Shy Games. Uh, Sprawlopolis, which is also from Button Shy Games. Uh, that one, Sprawlopolis can technically go from one to four players, but it works well, I think, at all player counts. Um, so I think those three would probably be my top picks. Um, I actually recently got Tides of Time back to the table again, um, which is a two player drafting game. And I forgot how much I liked it. Uh, Z Garcia actually taught it to me. Gosh, how long ago? It was at MeepleCon 
probably like three or four years ago, if I had to, something like that, um, a long time ago. Um, and I picked up a copy um, and it very rarely, it's the card sizes on that one are bigger. So it's harder to fit in my quiver. What I should do is to do the same thing I do with Hanami Koji and put the larger cards on the bottom of the case and then stack the smaller cards on top of it. Honestly, I should probably just throw it in there because that feels like a good one to tote around. It's really fun. So hopefully those will help you. <laughs> uh, Sorrow Song says, I like campaign games, but don't really have many who are interested in them. Yeah, we, my group has struggled with that too. Like we actually have a lot of people in my game group who like campaign and legacy games, but just finding the time to get together and play all of them is really tough. Um, to some of the earlier questions that I didn't think about, uh, Clank Legacy is very high on my list of things that I want to play. Um, and I have people who are interested in playing it, but we just haven't found the time to make it happen yet. So it'll happen eventually. James asks, do you have any games that you play solo or would you rather play a video game or do some other activity? So for me, most of the time, if I am spending time by myself at home and I'm chilling out, TV is my go-to. Um, I really enjoy watching TV a lot. Um, and recently I've actually been re-watching ER, uh, which is uh, they have on Hulu. And I watched ER back in the day um, so I started watching ER when I was in middle school. <laughs> I remember specifically getting to stay up late on Thursday nights to watch ER. Um, and then I watched it for a few years. I think I stopped watching when I was in high school. Um, not like specifically, I just kind of fell off of it. And then when I was in college was when they added John Stamos to the cast. And so I picked it back up again <laughs> because I've always loved John Stamos. And I watched it for a few years again, and I think then it ended. Um, I don't remember. I don't know if I watched it all the way to the end. But uh, needless to say, I'm going to watch the whole thing this time around. I don't know how long it's going to take me. Probably a very, very long time. I'm only in season one right now. Um, this is back when they made, like, seasons of shows with 20-plus episodes, you know, 25, 26 episodes in a season. So it's going to take me a while to get through it, and especially because it ran for so long. Um, but yeah, so if I'm alone, TV is my go-to, generally. It's my favorite way to chill out. Video games are also up there, um, but I tend to go through video games in spurts. Like, there will be a few weeks where I'm playing a lot of video games, and then I'll stop playing video games for a while. And then I'll play a lot. And this tends to happen when, like, new stuff comes out that I really enjoy. So back in the fall when Untitled Goose Game and The New Link's Awakening dropped, I played both of those all the time um, when they were first newly released. As for solo board games, I very rarely play board games solo. Like, almost never. Um, there have been some exceptions to that, the most notable of which is a game that I always forget to mention when people ask me about solo games, and that is Legacy of Dragonhold. Um, it's funny because people ask me about solo games and I answer other things. And then Kathy, who I mentioned earlier, my friend, she comes to me and she goes, you forgot to mention Legacy of Dragonhold again. And I always forget to mention it. So Legacy of Dragonhold doesn't have to be a solo game. It can be played multiplayer, but I think the best way to play Legacy of Dragonhold is solo. And that's the only way I have played it. And that's the only way I want to play it. And it is wonderfully delightful. I actually, it's been now, what, two, oh, more than two years since I played through the whole campaign. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing through it again. Um, I've been waiting so it's long enough that I won't remember most of the bits and pieces and know where to go and what to do. I just want to play through it again. Um, I'm really excited to do so. So if I'm going to play a board game solo, I think for me, story has a lot to do with it. Um, I want an interesting story. I do have some of the uh, Van Ryder games, graphic novel adventures. I haven't played through them, but I own those. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm more interested in doing solo is things with an interesting story. I have actually be, been considering streaming some solo games here on the Dice Tower, um, whether it was Legacy of Dragonhold or the Van Ryder games, or I've actually considered doing Gloomhaven, 
which I, you all, if you've been following my stuff for a while, know that I've had sitting in my house since 2017 and I still haven't even punched it out. So <laughs> I will eventually play Gloomhaven. That's the joke is that I will play it eventually, I think. Um, but I haven't played it yet. And I've considered streaming that. And I don't know if people would be interested in watching me solo board games here on the channel. So if that is something that interests you, um, s send me an email, crystal at dicetower.com. Um, and let me know if that is something that interests you and what games you would be interested in seeing me play solo, especially like, would you rather me play something like Gloomhaven that is long and it'll be multiple sessions and there's a story? Or like, would you rather see me play one-off games like ed escape room games or the choose your own adventure games, those kinds of things? Um, because I've considered doing that. I don't know, I, honestly, I might in theory do it in tandem with this stream, like do board game brunch and then stream a game after it or some other time on that same Sunday. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, if you're interested, let me know because I don't wanna do it if nobody's gonna watch. <laughs> that seems silly. Um, Oh, uh, just as a quick reminder before I answer the next question, if you haven't clicked the thumbs up button below the video, if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithms and it'll help more people find this video after it's not live anymore. So then hopefully they can come and join us next month. So thank you for doing that, please. And thank you. Um, let's see here. Nick says, I should probably call our copy of Firefly since it was a gift for my wife and she has no interest in playing it. Yeah, if you're not playing a game, give it to somebody who will play it. I think that's a good um, good move. Let's see here. It was Eric's top 10 games. That was the only description. So you were talking about episode 86. I don't think it's his top 10 games of all time, but let's look and see. Let's find out, shall we? Because now I'm curious. So if I look at, let's see here. Oh, I always forget it's under T and not D. The Dice Tower. See all episodes. Wait, what episode? Episode 86. Oh, so like forever ago? Because they're in the 500s. Or do you mean 586? Oh, they're in the 600s now, but let's see. Because there was, so episode 586 was best of 2018. If we scroll really far, all the way back to episode 86, let's see what the topic was there. Oh, yeah, so it was top 10 games. Yep. So I guess in 2007, uh, Merchant of Venus wasn't up there yet. So that was 13 years ago, I'd say. Maybe he hadn't played it yet. I don't know. <laughs> That's probably the case. So let's see here. I'm going to scroll back down. I'm sure other people may have already figured all of that out in the chat, but I wanted to look it up. Okay. Are there any really good Star Trek games? Asks Carrie Schumann. Um, yes. Um, my favorites are uh, Star Trek Ascendancy and Star Trek Fleet Captains. Um, there are some, there aren't any really good light Star Trek games, although there might be an exception to this. So Eric recently told me about a game called Star Trek Chrono Trek that he really liked. And uh, I actually got a copy of it on the Dice Tower Cruise, but I haven't played it yet. So that one's pretty good. But like there are some others, like there's Five Year Mission, which people are kind of lukewarm on and Star Trek Catan, which doesn't really feel like Star Trek at all. It's just a variant of Catan. Uh, Star Trek Panic, which is a reskin of Castle Panic. I hate Star Trek Panic. And I don't say that about very many board games. I think you all know. Star Trek Panic is was awful. I don't remember what the co combination of cards were, but a sp specific set of things came out that were basically impossible to do right from the get-go. And I was really frustrated with it. So I just, yeah, not interested. Um, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
what into okay so terrier halo asks what intellectual property do you want to have a good game i mean there's monopoly everything but something you feel could make for a fun game with an ip you like um let's see here i have a list of game themes that i would like to see in games at some point or that like i would theoretically like to design at some point uh before i pull it up I know that m near the top of my list is the Hannibal TV show. I've always thought that that would make for a really, really interesting um, either social deduction game or hidden traitor game um, because the whole, the, it's, the story of Hannibal, the TV show, is before people knew who Hannibal Lecter truly was. So in my mind, the game would have everybody's trying to solve crimes and be good guys, but one of them secretly is a serial killer. And I think that that could be really interesting. Um, and there would be some stuff there that would be different than other games in that genre. So, but I, I recognize that not enough people have seen the Hannibal TV show, which is a, a shame because it is my favorite, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Um, it's really, really, really good. Um, let's see. I have a list somewhere. I don't know where it is. Let's see if I can search in my notes and find it on my phone. Oh, here we go. Um, what's funny is a lot of the things on my list for themes aren't based on IPs, but they have been made into board games since I made this list, which kind of blows my mind. Like I actually thought that Tibetan mandalas would make for a really good game. And there's now a two player game that's based on mandalas. Um, I thought that the New York subway system would make for an interesting game. And I think somebody's doing that or already has. Um, so an intellectual property that I would love to have turned into a game is the book, The Orchid Thief, which then got turned into the movie adaptation. Um, it's one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite books. I would love to see that. Um, I would love to see a board game based on the old Zork uh, games, the text-based adventures that were then later um, regular computer games as well. I think that that would make for a really fun board game. Um, what's fun, I had Homestar Runner on my list and that turned, Trogdor is now a board game. Um, oh, I actually, I wanted to, I thought it would be interesting if the old computer game Black and White was turned into a board game. I think Spirit Island kind of does similar things to what Black and White did, but in Black and White, you are a god and you are, you have the power to like control the people and the land and you have a creature that you control and it was really interesting i love black and white i think it would make for a really interesting board game but i don't know how um oh i want a an asymmetrical game based on the rocky horror picture show and I'm, that's all i'm going to say about that because that come on that sells itself um let's see are there any other ip based ones on my list no um there's some other ones that i have on here that i think would be really fun any new any ideas that i have I think there's some neat stuff on my list, but who knows? Maybe I'll design them someday. We'll find out. Uh, Halo asks, who besides you is a big Trekkie at the Dice Tower? I don't really think there's anybody. I think Eric would be the closest, um, but I wouldn't say he would call himself a big Trekkie. I think he's a Star Trek fan, but more casually. Um, I don't know. Most of the others don't really watch Star Trek all that much, to my knowledge. So not really sure. Let's see. James says, playing Hanabi with tiles sounds like playing a variant of Rummy Cube I played as a kid. Maybe one of the reasons I never enjoyed Hanabi. So the fact that you did play it with tiles or didn't play it with tiles? I don't, I, sorry, I didn't understand that, I guess. Um, I love Rummy Cube as a kid and I actually got to play Rummy Cube for the first time in years at PAX Unplugged back in December and I really enjoyed it. So it held up. Um, let's see. Have I, uh, Jace asks, have I played Foodies? I have not played Foodies. I've heard good things, but I have not played it. Um, Terrier Halo says, we picked up Fox in the Forest duet uh, during a mini vacation around Val Valentine's Day and played it a bunch. Um, yeah. Um, so wait, that's the new one, right? Because regular Fox in the Forest is competitive, but duet is the cooperative version that just came out recently. Is that right? I think. Um, I haven't played either, although I've heard good things. Carrie says, my husband and I are doing Clank Legacy two player together. We really like it. That's awesome. I would, would have been curious to know how it would work with two players. So that's good to know. Um, let's see here. Or 
elite. So I don't really have a lot of thoughts there. Sorry. Um, let's see here. Oh, and it looks like the video might be buffering. So apologies. Hopefully you all can still hear me. I don't know why the stream is not... The, yeah, the, the quality is not good right now. I apologize. Hopefully that'll fix itself. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, but I am happy to answer it again. And I think for me, I'm not necessarily planning on too much, but some of the ones that I said something else earlier, but those two are kind of near the list. Um, and approachable. That's definitely true. Um, Sorrow Song also says Gloomhaven would be fun to watch a live stream of. And what's neat about that is Gloomhaven does contain spoilers, like when you're opening the new characters and things, but since it's been out for so long, I feel like I wouldn't have to be, I mean, obviously I would still post a spoiler warning for anyone who, like me, hasn't played it yet, but hopefully it wouldn't be too bad, um, and people would be willing to watch if they've already seen the stuff, so. Oh, the chat jumped again. Let's see here. Watching a solo play in this way is like watching people playing video games in a lot of ways. That makes sense. I actually watch a lot of video game streamers. So especially I love watching video game speed runs. Um, so that does make sense that people would potentially enjoy that. And I think I would provide interesting commentary <laughs> while I was playing a board game. So no guarantees of that, of course, but who knows? All right, let's see here. Oh, somebody was talking about Star Trek games and they yelled, Frontiers, do not forget Frontiers. Uh, I've never played it, so I can't really forget it because I just, I'm not going to recommend a game that I haven't played before. Um, if I remember correctly, Star Trek Frontiers was the Mage Knight reskin. Is that correct? I believe, um, which I haven't played that either. So I don't really, I've heard that that one is good, but I don't, I can't speak to it personally. Oh yes, Mage Knight reskinned. You said that earlier. Perfect. Okay. Um, Five-year mission I like. It is a variant of Roll For It, but co-op. Um, I mean, Roll For It is super luck heavy and brutal regular. So at least co-op, you're all in it together. Um, yep, you guys were talking about that. Uh, James says, just not into horror TV or movies, but I love the horrified board game. The horrified board game is super great. It is really, really good. Um, I don't watch horror movies almost at all. And I don't like blood and gore or jump scares. But I think, I assume you made that comment because I was talking about the Hannibal TV show. The Hannibal TV show is beautiful. And that's not to say there is never any gore. There are some scenes that are tough to watch. But the vast majority of the show is not gory. It is psychological and there aren't like jump scares or cheap, you know, cheap scares like there are in some horror content. It is a very intelligently written television show and it is fascinating and the characters are so well developed. I just, I don't watch horror stuff. Truly, I don't at all. And I love Hannibal. So if you've ever wanted to watch it and shied away because you thought it was horror, I would maybe give it a shot. I will say that there are, I will say there are scenes hard to watch. That is true. But I just, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's so good. Um, Let's see here. Zork the board game with grooves. Great idea. Make it happen. Um, so yeah, it looks like a couple of you really like Zork uh, as an idea. I actually, when Time Stories was new, I thought it would be neat to create a fan-made scenario for Time Stories um, that was Zork-themed because the Time Stories um, like format, I felt, would work really well with it. But now I don't really care about Time Stories anymore <laughs> after it burned me so bad. Um, let's see. Sorrow Song says, I'd love to see Black and White remade as a video game in general hardware. Has improved so much it could be really good. Yeah, Black and White isn't available. Like, there are a lot of older computer games that you can download and play. And Black and White is one that there really isn't... I don't think there are a lot of ways to acquire it, aside from finding old CDs and having a computer that can run them. Um, I think Black and White was a really, really cool video... or computer game. Um... 
and I love I played I played it a lot when it was new. I played Black and White and Black and White Two. I don't remember how Black and White Two was different, um, but it was really fun. Let's see. Oh, okay, so the video was buffering, but the sound was fine. Good to know. Thank you. Um, oh yeah, the other game for Dice Tower West was the third Azul. Uh, so uh, Chris, if that's what, when you were asking me, um, yes, Summer Pavilion is on my short list of things that I want to get played. And that one feels like the most doable out of all of them because Paladins is a longer game. Um, well, Isle of Cats is doable too, I'm sure. And probably Paladins might not happen because I don't tend to want to play two games that are too long in case I have to jump up and help with something. Um, but Isle of Cats and Summer Pavilion, I think I could probably get played during the con. Maybe those will be my two quick goals. Let's see here. Sorrow Song says, I've played some Gloomhaven and honestly the spoilers feel like it wouldn't affect much since there is so much con content understanding where it fits would eliminate a lot of that issue. Okay, that's good to know. Um... And let's see, what time is it? Okay, it's 10.22. We have eight minutes left. I have run out of questions. So if there is anything else that you all want to ask me, ask me now. Um, also click the thumbs up at the bottom of the video if you had just stopped by and you haven't done that yet um, because it helps me and I appreciate it and it makes me happy. Um, I did see the numbers go up a little bit earlier when I asked the first time, so that makes me really happy. But yeah, if you all have any other questions for me, uh, leave them in the chat. Otherwise, hopefully I'm going to see some of you at Dice Tower West this week. Um, I know that it sometimes sounds like us here at the Dice Tower proper are talking about conventions all the time. And I know that that can be a bummer if you don't get to attend conventions for one reason or another, whether that's uh, kids or time off from work or proximity, you live too far away. There's a lot of stuff that can prevent you from going to all of the conventions. And I get it. Sometimes it can be kind of a bummer to be like, oh my gosh, that's all they talk about is conventions. But I, I want you to know that if you don't attend any conventions ever, that's totally fine. And you're still a board gamer and you're still an awesome board gamer and you're still valid and your board gaming experience is still great. Um, and just because we're going to conventions doesn't make us better. It certainly doesn't make me better. <clears throat> so I just wanted to make sure that that was clear that I know that we've been talking a lot about conventions recently because there's been so many that have happened in short succession. There was PAX Unplugged and then the Dice Tower Cruise and now Dice Tower West all one after another. Um, and it's really exciting for us to talk about those things. And we want to make sure that the people who are going to be there are aware um, that we're going to be there Obviously the Dice Tower events are kind of a given, but um, just wanted to say that. Hopefully that is okay. Um, but yeah, um, we, we won't always talk about conventions all the time. <laughs> um, oh, some stuff has been ha ha piling up in the chat. Um, let's see here. Terrier Halo says, I'm getting Isle of Cats for the daughter, a way to not make my own game collection to grow too much. Aha, see that's a good trick. So should I start buying board games for my dogs? <laughs> Because I feel like that won't work. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Kabuki Kid's here. Hi, Kabuki Kid. Um, totally fine if you're uh, quiet. That is, if, if be, do, being at work is important. Um, AJ asks, have you played Slay the Spire? I haven't, um, but a lot of my friends have, and a lot of people really like Slay the Spire. I've considered buying it on my Switch, um, but I haven't um, yet. Maybe I will at some point when it's on sale. Uh, Janet says, hello from Honolulu. Hi, Janet. I love Honolulu so much. So I hope you uh, are enjoying it there, whether you live there or are just visiting. Um, and earlier, Richard said hi. Hi, Richard Saunders. Um, and Marcus G said hi from Germany. Oh my gosh. Hi from Germany. I'm so glad that I'm able to do this stream in the morning Pacific time so that I can um, be available to those of you who are uh, over in Europe um, at a time when you can actually watch, because I know that some of the evening streams, especially Dice Tower Tonight, you're never going to watch live because you'll be sleeping. <laughs> um, let's see here. Favorite color crystals. I, I don't know if I have, I mean, I, I have favorite colors. Wait, are you asking my favorite colors and my name is Crystal, or are you asking what my favorite colors of crystals are? Because... They'd probably be the same. I don't know. Purple is my favorite color. If you couldn't tell from what, well, I guess my hair is more pink right now. 
with a little bit of blue mixed in, which kind of turns it to purple. Wow, it's weird. It looks way more pink on the stream. It looks way more purple in person. I wonder if I can get it closer, if you can see that it's more purple. It was interesting. The further away I get, the more pink it looks, at least in the what I'm seeing on my screen. I don't know. You Color is never true online or in photos. It's so hard to get. And my hair has grown out a lot. I haven't bleached it since June. So all of my brown is growing back in. I need to redo it soon, but I'm trying to let it grow out and be really healthy. So um, let's see here. But yeah, so purple is my favorite color. Um, yeah. The Scary Eagle asks, are there any good romantic spots to take the wife in Las Vegas? There are so many spots. Um, so it depends on whether you're looking for something touristy or if you're looking for a restaurant or whatever else. Um, off the top of my head, the Bellagio fountains are always great. Um, it's often very crowded, but just they're gorgeous and it's free to go and stand out and watch the Bellagio fountains. They do a show in the evenings every, I want to say 15 minutes. Um, and it's always a different song and it's delightful. I would honestly go out there for an hour, hour and a half if you've never been and just watch the show multiple times. And what's nice is if you stay between shows, the crowd kind of clears out and then comes back in. So you can get a really good spot to stand in and just hang out for a while. Um, the gondola rides at Paris, um, or no, the Venetian. Are they the Venetian? Yeah, they're the Venetian are where the gondola rides are. Um, I'm literally confusing my cities right now. Um, those are pretty neat. Um, it's a little bit cheesy, but the gond gondoliers will sing to you. Um, as far as restaurants go, um, one of my favorite steakhouses that a lot of people don't know about is uh, Andiamo Italian Steakhouse, which is at The D, which is a hotel in downtown Las Vegas. And The D itself is very unremarkable and not fancy, but on Diamo is a great steakhouse. Um, I also really like Herbs and Rye, which is a um, kind of a speakeasy style steak restaurant that is off the strip. Um, and they have really, really good cocktails there. So if you're looking for interesting cocktails, that's a good one. Um, their cocktail menu is based on decades. So they have like cocktails that were famous in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and um, it's just a really neat vibe. You do have to make reservations at both of those restaurants, though, just as a heads up. Um, all right. Let's see here. Uh, Rainier says, conventions are important for publishers and media, but not a necessity otherwise. Other, although for those who are able to attend, we always want to make sure you have a great time there. That's really nice of you to say. And I just, I wanted to make sure that people knew that, like, it's okay if you can't go to board game conventions. Like, truly, that's fine. And I don't get to go to all of the board game conventions. I'm probably not going to Gen Con this year. I went last year for the first time, but I'm probably not going this year. We'll see, that might change. But for now, my plan is probably not. Um, let's see here. Top people talking about colors. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris from Meeple Overboard says, fantastic date spot in Las Vegas. Pinball Hall of Fame. Not romantic, but awesome. That's true. My husband and I uh, and my friends and I and lots of people and I have been to the Pinball Hall of Fame. And it is a really neat place to visit. If, if you're ever in Las Vegas and you like old school video games and pinball machines, it is a must see. Um, it is really quite delightful. I love the Pinball Hall of Fame. It's been one of my favorite things since I moved here. Um, uh, Janet says, I moved here, come visit. So Janet lives in Honolulu. I would love to come visit you. I love Hawaii so much. Um, if the cost of living there were lower, maybe I would live there, but it's, gosh, it's delightful. Um, Carrie Shulman says, Harris Carnival Court is a lot of fun. During the day has the best bartenders. Um, that's good to know. I don't really drink much. So uh, that's not a place, I, I, especially during the day, I don't tend to drink at all. So I guess when I was younger, maybe would have taken advantage of that more. Terrier Halo says, I have not been in Las Vegas since 2000. I imagine some things look different. I know the Frontier Casino that I stayed at then was demolished shortly after. Who yeah, since 2000, Las Vegas has changed a lot. It's changed a lot in the 12 years that I've lived here, since 2008. So yeah, you, you'll you probably be shocked at how much is new and different if you come and visit again. Um, Let's see here. It looks like 
I've run out of questions. So uh, I will end things here. Um, as a reminder, click the thumbs up button below the video if you like my live Q and A's that I do every month, the last Sunday of the month at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, and I think 4.30 p.m. GMT. Uh, with dial daylight savings time, I, it's always hard for me to remember which when things shift and whatnot. But around then, um, I'm really happy to join you all every month here to answer your questions and hang out with you for a little while. If you are going to be at Dice Tower West this week here in Las Vegas, where I live, please stop me and say hello. Um, let me know if you watch Dice Tower tonight with Eric and I, or if you watch my Q and A's, or um, if you want to see me stream some more games here on the channel. I, uh, I've done some board game streams here on the channel in the past, but it's been a little while. And if there is interest, I would love to start doing that again. So uh, I will hopefully see some of you this week at the convention. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful end of February and a great March. And I'll see you at the end of March. Uh, so yeah, uh, have fun gaming, everyone. Bye.